So I wanna welcome everybody and thank you for coming to our second annual symposium. It's really great to see all of you. And we've met, I've met many of you by Zoom. Um, so it's kind of nice to see some of you um, in person. We're just gonna give you a brief background, sort of an update of what's going on. Um, and both myself and Marilyn will be doing that. And then Jess is gonna talk also just quickly and briefly. So I just want to introduce all of us. Um, I'm me, um, Becky Simmons. Um, I'm an, a, a neonatologist um, as well as uh, run a basic science laboratory here at Penn. And Eamon Chen is here. He's the co-director. And um, I'm going to let you um, tell a little tiny bit about yourself, Eamon. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I was a little looking at a chat. So um, um, I'm a marmon epidemiologist. Um, I um, do research on... Um, Around, um, endocrine disrupting chemicals and metals and mixtures in child health, um, mostly pregnancy outcomes and child development. And it's really great to work with all of you on children's mental health and lead to, especially this center is really on translation and we're really excited on that. Marilyn? Hi, I'm Marilyn Howard. Um, some of you know me, some of you I'm just meeting today. And um, I'd like to thank you and welcome you all here today. Um, I know it's it's hard to sometimes get together, um, especially in the summer when we'd all like to do other things. I'm the um, deputy director, and I, I am an um, occupational and environmental medicine physician, and I'm uh, um, working with many of you on a lot of our translational core uh, programs. And Tyra Bryant-Stevens, um, she's a pediatrician at CHOP. She's not able to be here today. I don't know if she's online or not. Um, she is the Translation Core co-director. I think many of you have met her. And uh, so these are two phenomenal people who have really made um, our center a success. And I can't say enough great things about them and how much they have really been involved. Our website is fantastic, all because of Jess. Uh, yes. All right. So as um, I think some of you know that this is a collaborative center. And so the NIEHS um, awarded um, all of, of these centers um, really uh, to help us work together across the country to better children's environmental health. So here's us, Emory University, NYU, and then there's the network, Hopkins, Oregon State, USC. And so again, we call ourselves the Collaborative Center in Children's Environmental Health. So our mission is um, to actually really um, understand lead exposure and harm reduction, air pollution, asthma, endocrine disrupting chemicals. These are our themes, our research themes, but also our translation themes. And in our translation programs, which you're gonna hear a little bit um, today, uh, our pilot projects, the Philadelphia region is a focus, and then we really, um, because of all of you, want to empower the researchers in our community groups. So working together, um, I think, is critically important to help us understand and make an impact on children's environmental health. We have 40 research members, and almost every day we have a new member, which is very exciting. And I think what's really exciting is um, our ability to partner with folks from across these institutions, many of whom are here. So uh, obviously Penn, uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Jefferson, Drexel, University of Delaware, Lehigh, Temple, um, Lincoln University, and Villanova. So I think that, that what, this is really what makes us um, unique compared to the other um, centers, which have much smaller um, partnerships. So we have, we're very proud of this and very excited um, that all of these institutions are part of our group. Here are the new members from what we had from last year. So Amy Bleakley at the University of Delaware, um, Jane Clary at, Dexel, at Drexel, um, Anna Claire DeRuce at Drexel, um, Thomas, who you're gonna hear from um, shortly, um, in Wuhan, um, Erica Korb, uh, Yu Chin Lin, Stephanie Main, and Danielle Jackson. Um, former matter, members who have moved on, um, Laura Andorku, um, Marina um, Feiler, and Medina Jackson Brown. So funding, um, this is what is actually very important so that um, those of us who are doing uh, research both um, at the lab, in the lab and at the bench, as well as epi um, research and translational research, we need to have funding that will help us um, carry out our mission. 
So Marisa Bartolome, she, uh, she and I are working on preconception phthalate exposure and offspring outcomes. Um, Eamon Chen is um, working on developmental neurotoxicity uh, of organophosphate and novel brominated flame retardants in children. He's also looking at the impact of pre and postnatal chemical mixture exposures on child neural behavior and neural imaging. Jane is looking at community-based air toxics monitoring during rapid environmental change in industrialized neighborhoods. Also pediatric health and extreme weather and health effects of ambient um, temperature. Um, this is a very clever name, few heat. And then, uh, <clears throat> especially today, um, synergistic, uh, synergistic effects of stress and traffic-related air pollution on cardiovascular health. Anna Claire is investigating the neighborhood green spaces as protection against development of asthma. Um, Dr. Hahn is looking at study of fumers in San Antonio, um, both from the immunology standpoint of inflammatory responses to these organic compounds, VOC exposures. And he's also identifying spatial and environmental correlates of airborne microplastics and nanoplastics across Philadelphia. A lot of this has been in the news lately. I'm sure many of you have read the stories about how the coral reefs are basically coated in plastic. And then development and application of a mobile apparatus for ultrafine particle inhalation and estimation of urban communities. So all of us are working together. I think that, that makes, again, a big difference um, in being able to collaborate. Dr. Ha has been working on placental responses to environmental chemicals. He has a very interesting model where he puts cells on a little chip and then can do all kinds of very interesting exposures to those cells and see how they interact. Dr. Jiang is looking at mitochondrial directed therapy and carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, Kristen Lyell <clears throat> is looking at neurotoxicity and then ASD and rich risk for an ECHO cohort. ECHO is a big group across the United States of children um, and they're collecting lots and lots of data across the country. He's also examining dietary modifiers of associations between air pollution and autism related outcomes. Jessica Rice is a fairly new um, assistant professor of pediatrician um, at CHOP and she's looking at indoor fine particulate matter exposure of respiratory health outcomes in premature infants. And Jay Schneider, um, who's been in this field for a very long time, is looking at epigenetic modifications. Um, that's how genes interact and can regulated um, and looking at environmental modifications of, uh, or in how the environment modifies behavioral um, outcomes. He's also looking at, uh, again, another very basic uh, molecular mechanism and how that relates to memory um, formation and how lead um, alters this. And then myself um, working with uh, Marisa Bartolome, we're looking at phthalates um, prior to conception and also during pregnancy and what happens to the offspring. So we have lots of other funding. Um, and I'm not gonna go through all of this. Um, I think this is um, what we're very excited about some of these newer um, programs that are now being funded. Heather Burris and Sunny Mumford just got a giant grant from the NIH um, as part of a big, um, and hopefully she'll talk just a little tiny bit about this in our breakout session um, to really, again, look at environmental exposures and how they impact um, health particularly during um, pregnancy um, and early childhood development. Um, again, so I'll just let you just briefly look at this. Um, Erica, who is a new member, is um, really doing some exciting fundamental science. Um, she's been looking at, again, how um, molecular regulation of learning and memory has some exciting new data on um, these mixtures of endocrine disruptors and what um, this and how that impacts um, offspring behavior. Um, again, Sharon um, is one of our again um, senior members, and she has very um, strong interest in air pollution um, and exposures and how that works on environmental lung injury. Again, I'll just go through all of them, let you guys just briefly take a look at this. So our early stage investigators, this is, this is the exciting part of our program because we want to train the next generation of scientists. Um, many of these people are here. Um, so Mary Regina Boland, Thea Golden, who's in the back, um, Kate Hamilton, David Jang, Stephanie Mage. Again, she's a pediatrician at CHOP. And Harriet, I don't have my glasses on, but I don't think I see you. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> I left my glasses at home. Um, <laughs> Daniel Jackson, um, Courtney Wolf, and Jessica Williams. just one of the various uh, administrative tools, marketing tools, communication tools we've done as a center since uh, started. Uh, we, one of the main goals is we're trying to make sure people know about the research that everyone in this room, the programs that everyone in this room and online are working on and get it out to the community to hopefully get partners, get potential funding, basically elevate what everyone here is doing. And uh, so a big part of what we've been doing in the administrative core is uh, the big first project was building a website. If you haven't visited, uh, please go. If you have any news, press releases, new articles you wanna share, you can just shoot me an email and I'll get it out in all our different avenues. We are on all different social media platforms, we even just started threads this week because that's, <laughs> that's now a thing. <laughs> so uh, uh, working on uh, seminars, we have monthly seminars, we're planning our fall one. Uh, right now, uh, monthly seminars. So if you have ideas of topics that you would like to speak about, you can just shoot me an email. Uh, we're doing videos online on our YouTube channel to share as well as to promote if there's any new research or ideas that we're happy to partner with and get the word out. And then the big one is uh, also doing uh, supporting events, brochures uh, for programs that are done at our translation core. Uh, we not only do we do work that supports everybody here, but we're also having programs that partnering with the community that uh, Marilyn will talk about shortly. And so getting the resources out for those different programs. So it's new information, uh, marketing communications where I, I'm here to help you make what you do easier. So anytime you have any questions, just shoot me an email and uh, I'm happy to work with you on anything. Thanks. So I just have to brag about the website. Um, I can brag because I didn't really do anything for it. Um, so the other centers, the other six centers thought we had the very best website and now they're sort of stealing some of our ideas. Um, so please do look at it. Um, it's really a tour de force. Um, so I think the, the next just brief um, bit of information I want to give um, to you all is the development core. And again, as I mentioned, this is really a fundamental part of our um, center. And that's really to help train the next generation of scientists. And so what we've done now is to give out pilot grants. So it's not a huge amount of money, but every little tiny bit of money helps. And these are the ones that we've awarded within the last year. So Thomas, um, and actually is gonna talk a little bit, unfortunately he can't be here in person, um, a COVID exposure, fortunately he's not sick. Um, and so he will be talking virtually about his work on childhood exposure to toxic metals um, during 3D printing. And then Thea, Dr. Golden, she um, has a pilot looking at the mechanism by which gestational exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals alters children's health. And then Kristen is looking at and examining and communicating the role of neighborhood and diet, since so many of these exposures actually intersect with the effects of diet. Um, on the study of endocrine disrupting chemicals. And then Tim Nellen, he's a, um, also a pediatrician. He's a neonatology fellow learning how to be a neonatologist. And with Heather Burris, he's looking at chronic lung disease and environmental air pollution and temperature related outcomes. So the next cycle is open for proposals. It's due in just a couple of weeks, Friday, August 3rd. If you all have any questions about that, just shoot me. Um, or just an email. It's a very straightforward process. Um, it's easy to apply and all the information is on our website. I, okay, great. Well, you know, you've heard, we've heard a lot about our researchers and although that is a critical part of the work that we're doing, we have another focus in our center. This is a translational center. So it's really all about the programs that we can deliver to improve 
environmental health. And one of the, our goals for today is to have you all together here in one place so that we can identify those opportunities for synergy. We can identify opportunities. Um, you know, I'm sure you've all already seen some uh, researchers that may share your commun the community members' interests. And hopefully we'll um, have that in, in the opposite direction as well um, when we hear from some of our community partners. We have a community stakeholder advisory committee. And um, these folks um, meet with us uh, regularly around the kinds of work that they're doing. They listen to what we're doing and give us advice on a regular basis. If anyone um, it, who's currently not on this group would like to be, please let me know because we certainly are very, um, very happy to um, uh, you know, include as many voices as possible. So our translation core currently has a number of programs. I don't want anyone in this room to think that we are satisfied with the programs that we have um, because we really are always looking for new ones that would be impactful and meaningful in children's environmental health. So although I will talk about a few of our programs, we are looking for other ones. So please keep that in mind. One of our main programs is the Community Asthma Prevention Program. We recognize that in Chester, um, there, was, um, there were barriers to healthcare. There was a very high asthma rate. And um, we knew that in Philadelphia, um, one of our, um, my co um, director of the translation corps, Dr. Tyra Bryan Stevens, had established already a very impactful program um, uh, with community health workers going into homes to try to uh, coordinate care, improve the environmental conditions. And we brought that program to Chester. And through lots of hard on the ground work and lots of good community partners, we've enrolled 29 Chester families so far, done many presentations, 20 or more. Um, to lots of community stakeholders in Chester. And we have a unique stakeholder advisory board just for Chester partners to talk about barriers that we might not know about in Chester that we need to overcome. So um, we, and, and, and what's more is not only do we um, have the one community health worker going into homes that was funded by this grant, but Keystone First, was so excited that we we're rolling out this program in Chester that they funded a second community health worker. So we now have two doing this work. So we're very pleased about that. Another program is um, called, um, uh, well, it's our environmental um, health consultation program, but we're partnering with the city's Built to Last program. You may be aware that um, in uh, latest, over the last few years, there's been a lot of money available um, for cities to help people who really cannot fund the kind of home repairs that they need. We've had lots of, of evidence that home conditions are so impactful to health. And the Built to Last program in Philadelphia goes into homes of low-income families and fixes their roofs, um, um, takes care of pests, changes out lead service lines, fixes lead, um, peeling lead paint. They do all of it. So it's really beyond what a lead and healthy homes program can do. And so we have partnered with this Built to Last program and we've designed a, a, a process by which we talk with community um, members who are involved about the health impacts of the things that were found. So if there, are, if there was asbestos found in the house, we tell them all about that. We get them to appropriate medical care for asthma, allergies, um, get their children tested for lead, um, if that's appropriate. We basically tailor the intervention to the, uh, the family. And so far we've done about 15 of these consultations and we plan to keep up with the Built to Last program through, as you can see on the slide, in 2025, they're expecting to, to do 250 in that year. So um, we may be looking to you to partner with us to help do some of this work. And we've had some of those discussions already, but um, we, we think it, it will be, um, um, most people have at least given us the verbal feedback that they find it very helpful. We also have partnered with Women for a Healthy Environment to do some webinars for childcare centers. We did a needs assessment and found that um, um, these topics were ones that, that the um, childcare providers 
didn't feel that they had enough um, information about and wanted to hear more about. So we plan to um, tailor our webinars going forward on some of these topics. We've done one already about keeping children safe um, from environmental conditions in the summer. And we, after the uh, latest wildfire incident, um, did another one on how do you negotiate um, ve uh, ventilation systems in a building that may not have central ventilation? Um, how do you, when, when do you open the windows? When do you put the air conditioner on recirculate? Those kinds of issues that are really very specific to a lot of our, um, uh, especially low income, smaller daycares uh, in the city. We successfully completed um, one round of our Academy for Environmental Exposure Reduction, a um, program, an eight week program for high school students. Um, we selected 12 high school students, all from, uh, from 11 different high schools all in environmental justice neighborhoods in Philadelphia and brought them to campus and um, had many of you or some of you involved in our process of training them around endocrine disrupting chemicals and how do we, how do you avoid them? How do you um, know how to find them and choose different products? Um, they um, produced some videos as, as part of this uh, process that we asked them to roll out to their individual schools. Um, and we're collecting data right now on how successful that was. But you can see the videos on our website. We also, um, as you may remember, um, have tried to, to work within the school district with the Philadelphia um, Healthy Schools um, Initiative uh, around asbestos in our schools in Philadelphia. We started out by identifying, since we know we can't work with all of them, what are the elementary and middle school um, schools in Philadelphia in the environmental justice neighborhoods with a high environmental justice index. So we, we mapped those schools. We designed a hazard assessment approach and we've been reviewing a HERA reports and subsequent other reports of, of remediation done in schools. Um, and we are in the process of piloting um, uh, uh, our process in one of the in one of the schools. We hope to be able to be well on our way doing multiple schools this year. We too have uh, translation core pilot projects. And so this is our opportunity in particular to stimulate collaboration because all of our translation core pilots require um, a community partner. Um, a researcher and a community partner. Sometimes our community partners um, have researchers on their own that, that really can provide a lot of the support, but um, often it's really a collaboration with someone in our center. And it really can be anyone in our center. We've funded two so far, uh, neighborhood cleanup to reduce asthma triggers in Chester. And I just learned from Dr. Strand that um, uh, the um, putting out of um, dumpsters um, to, to, to allow community members to put their um, trash in and other things um, was so successful that he had to actually call in the city um, uh, public works because the, the dumpsters were overflowing. So um, we have, we're looking at some interesting feedback on that one. Uh, we also have funded an investigation of shade structures um, on encouraging more and longer outdoor play in uh, summer and fall days uh, at child care centers. Um, that was a um, with the uh, Women for Healthy Environment. Um, so we're looking forward to the, those results as well. We, I just wanna say one more thing about our uh, pilot pro program in the translation core. We recognize that having firm deadlines was not working for our community partners. So you should recognize that we have a rolling process. You can uh, feel free to submit um, an application at any time and we consider it as they come. And obviously we have a fixed dollar amount every year, but we, um, we will consider those applications as they come. We also um, are doing some things in collaboration with our national, uh, the other uh, partner, the other um, uh, centers throughout the country. Um, the coordinating center at the Children's Environmental Health Network has put together a website that is uh, bringing together uh, a lot of uh, materials from other centers, so they may be of use to you. So please check that out. Um, we have a national meeting in September in DC that where we'll be sharing um, our work and hearing from others about what they're doing and hopefully getting some more good ideas. Um, we're doing a, a network mapping analysis just to sort of see just how far is our reach and where are the gaps and what do we need to do to improve our reach in terms of bringing important uh, translational materials to um, our, our uh, ch uh, children audiences. Um, 
There are interest groups on climate change and endocrine disruptors that are available to any of you that might be interested in participating. If you'd like to participate, just um, uh, contact one of us. Jessica can easily get you to the uh, right group. And our members may be eligible to apply for other centers pilot grants. So we will be making sure that you hear about those in the process. We also will be presenting at the American Public Health Association as part of this consortium um, in uh, its um, Atlanta meeting in November. And I think that's all we have.